Hello, welcome to Oscar Modeling, and welcome to part 11 of our 1200 scale Yamato build. So, if you just happen to be tuning in to watch this for the first time, this is part 11. You can go back to the playlist and watch right from the first unboxing and review and check out all that. And uh, if you want to, start from part one. But if you've been following along, which I hope you have, and I'm thank you for everybody who has, welcome back as we continue on with this model. Again, if you're new, please hit that subscribe button and notifications tab so you get notified of the videos as they come out as soon as they come out. Uh, I want to thank anybody and everybody who joined in my live stream or who does join in my live stream every Friday, 6 a.m. Sydney, Australia time. Um, it's great having everyone in there as I throw questions out and get some help from everybody during the live stream and we chat about uh, all sorts of stuff. But a bit of Yamato there as well. All right, so... In the last video, we were a bit delayed because of the uh, paints. I'm waiting on some paint to come um, from Australia Post, from Outlaw Paints. Also, uh, we'll, we'll get into that. Um, I asked a question with some help for the um, reels that go along the deck for the rope, and uh, we'll go into some of the comments that I got from that. But for the moment, let's have a look at what we're doing here is we're actually at the beginning of the superstructure build side. So right now, I checked through the instructions. It's going to be a long time before we see that hull and deck again. In fact, somewhere in between, um, we'll get back to when the paint arrives, spraying that foredeck, um, getting the anchor chains on there, and doing those, we'll cut in and, and we'll do those parts to the point where we'll actually be able to glue the deck down onto the hull and have that completely ready waiting for this. And talking about this, this is step 40 and um, part ZE. I don't remember if I washed this or not, although let me just check my notes here because I write down a little W next to all the pieces. So what do we got? I say this was ZE, part ZE, and wouldn't you know, I didn't write this part down. Oh, Z parts. Okay, so it hasn't been washed as far as I know. Um, so tip number one, wash all your parts. Okay, just warm soapy water with dishwashing liquid. Uh, rinse them off properly, let them dry. Get rid of any um, anything that might be on there. Now, first step in this is they want us to drill holes. Let's just have a look at the instructions. So we've got make hole. That's all it says. They don't tell you what size hole or anything, but you don't need to know because the marks are semi-drilled there. So if your drill bit fits in there, you know it's the right size. The problem I have with here is that my icky sticky tungsten drill bits that I have won't get in there because of that. The angle's a bit too sharp. It's right in the very corner there, which is not a big problem because it's basically right there. So I'm going to just drill it from the top down. We'll drill those out. Also, while we're in the drilling, there's portholes all around this. Okay, so we've got portholes all the way around here. Um, none there, but both sides, which I'll be drilling out because uh, I want to put them, uh, my crystal, not crystal clear, but similar thing is my MIG MA glue that dries clear. I'll be putting those in there after it's painted to give it that uh, window effect. Which reminds me, I haven't done that on the hull yet. Hulls, as you know, is fully painted and um, clear coated. So I can um, touch up those as well. I'll make a note of that. And at some stage, whether in this video or the next video, we'll bring that hull down here and we'll put those little glass effects in all the portholes. All right. Um, on this section, 
there's uh, it starts off with uh, a few large pieces which will go on here piece in there um, there's another e24 piece which looks like a panel that makes like a wall area that's going to sit in there um, I notice it has portholes as well so that will be drilling that out as well just to get that effect not that you'll see them because it looks like it's right behind the smokestack but we'll do it anyway um, there's a lot of vents on here um, or I guess it's like um, air vents for inside that will all be done um, the whole thing will be painted uh, black primer all right and then the IG in gray and these I'll be doing with a wash to darken those a little bit because obviously these will be quite filthy for the weathering um, also there's a couple of pieces on the front that will go on I think there are also vents going in there and then we've got some photo etch quite a few photo etch um, ladders it looks like there's two four six eight nine ten including both sides so they'll all get put on 90% as far as I can tell 90% of the whole build up of this will be done without doing any painting all right I'll be painting this priming it and base coating it when everything's on there um, yeah when everything's complete there will be some things like uh, turret bases that have to be done at the German gray that I've been doing on the other ones on the deck to match but other than that it's all going to be sprayed in one one hit so it's just a matter of build 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 all right so enough talking i'm going to drill these holes out and wash this and uh get these pieces off the sprue i'll get all that laid out ready and then we'll come back and have a look at it all right okay be back in a minute hey welcome back so I didn't get all the pieces off the sprue laid out because I was didn't want a chance of getting all mixed up and and uh, lost, particularly since we're working with bits of photo etch. Um, but I will do is what I will do is uh, just show you a few tips for photo etch that I've learnt over the couple of years. Um, so first of all, you can see here that I've got the two ladders installed on here, two of many many things to be on installed on here now first of all get yourself a piece of tile you can pick these up any tile center will give you just a free sample uh, and they last forever okay you need a nice solid surface for your photo etch when you take your photo etch off and you have to bend it like that ladder because I actually had to bend the two prongs on each end of it to go into the spot um, you need a razor blade. Razor blades are the easiest to get underneath and bend things up. And a small ruler like this is fine. I do have another one. It's a 30 centimeter long one. And I did have a shorter one which has gone missing for some reason. I haven't been able to find it. But anyway, something like that. So you can put that down over the photo etch and then come along with this and bend it up. For more um, detailed work, you're probably best to invest in a bender like this but uh, I'll show you that as we go through and uh, when I need to use that um, also um, a wax pencil is handy this is one I've had for gosh I bought two of these one's gone missing <laughs> but I bought these uh, like two years ago when I started modeling fantastic for picking up small bits of photo etch um, and, and getting them around even placing them where you want to put them now, Icky Sticky sell these, which I'll, I'll get when this runs out or when this is replaced. Um, but again, they sell these as well. Very handy to have. Speaking of Icky Sticky, their CA activator here, fantastic stuff, all right? So when you're using the CA glue and you're using... What I do is I put a little piece down on a bit of paper here. Then I come along with my little wire piece touch a bit on the end of the wire and then come along to where I want to put the glue and just touch it there and then I get a small things Pump, some people use syringes I've seen that work well for placing small amounts of glue haven't tried that 
but I will be hopefully today going out and buying some um, syringes and needles because what I want to do is use the activator um, because that just does just instant sets it. It's fantastic, particularly for these. You hold it in place, touch it, and it's on. But the brush on this for these small bits of photo etch um, are a little bit too big. So what I want to do is use see if I can use this in a needle syringe and then apply it in tiny amounts where I want it rather than smearing it on with a brush um, covering more than I need to. So I will try, if I get a chance today, get out there and, and buy some and give that a go. But the activator is something really handy also for using on your photo etch. All right, so I've got those two ladders on. I've got about another half a dozen or more. Looks like about eight more to go around. So um, I will continue and uh, we'll cut back in uh, if there's something else I want to mention uh, that's worth knowing. <laughs> All right, we'll be back shortly. Okay, back again for just another tip or two. Um, use some blue tack. I have a little spot of blue tack there where you can rest your photo etch on. You can put it on the blue tack and it will sit there in the position that's easy for you to pick up and or at the angle you need to place it. Much easier on a piece of blue tack just sitting there. All right, and also when you do, always test fit first before you glue anything. All right. So uh, you know that it's going to be just where you want, where the, the bends, everything's going to fit just as you want. All right, always test fit. Another tip, third tip, keep your hands clean. Every time I come to the model bench here and I start working, I wash my hands. Just warm soapy water, get any grease off, because particularly with this superstructure, you'll be handing this over and over again you know, for, for a long time. And you don't want to be transferring grease and stuff off your hands onto this um, after you've already cleaned it. Particularly once you've got photo etch on there, it's, it would be harder, a lot harder to give this a wash after it's got all the parts on it, all right? So try and think of uh, your hands and keeping clean. You could wear gloves if you want. I've got these as well, but I find them a bit awkward. Um, and hot because it's hot here but um, yeah and and also keep a dedicated spot for this superstructure is being handy as well or somewhere you can always put it back to because this is going to build up with a lot of parts on it a lot of photo etch it's going to get quite difficult to handle without knocking parts off it if it's always in one place it's always not going to get bumped or damaged um, later on we might I might actually, like I've done before, um, glue a piece of sprue in there, creating a handle that I'll be able to hold it, hang on to it by, without touching anywhere near any of the parts that I've glued on. Um, but we'll see how we go with that. All right, um, so I'm just working on the ladders to go on the side here. I was a bit concerned because this ladder, when it sits on there, actually covers a couple of locating points for other things. But I've gone through the instructions way, way ahead, and it doesn't look like anything else is added that this will get in the way of. So, I mean, they're telling me to put it on at this step in the instructions, so I guess it should be okay. It's just a bit of concern that there's quite a other lot of locating points for other parts that, yeah, this might be in the way of. But let's cross our fingers and hopefully... Uh, they won't be in the way. All right, I will keep going and be back shortly. Okay, welcome back, everyone. So um, I've got the ladders all on. As you can see, they've all gone on uh, both sides. Looking good. Now, I've taken off the panels here. We've got one that's going to go on there like that. It's going to be glued on there. And we've got this one that sits pretty much perfectly straight in there. But this one actually has portholes on it. So there's a doorway there, and we've got one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to drill those out before I glue that on, and um, and that'll be that done. And then I think there's a couple more pieces to go on this section back here. Um, what I was also thinking is, 
for this photo edge building up on here, I need something in here to hold this by. So I'm trying to think of something that I could create like a handle to hold this. Uh, I'll see. I, ju I just don't want to be knocking off ladders and stuff, you know. I'll figure it out. All right. Um, so, yeah, I'll get these bits glued on. And then the, um, the vents on the back, there's just two little pieces, one each side. And then uh, that actually will be the end of uh, step 40. So I'll come back and we'll have a look when I've done that. Back in a sec. I'm just going to also mention um, there's two more holes in the back of this for needed for portholes. And for the record, 1.2 mil seems to be the uh, size for most of the holes I've come across um, throughout the whole ship so far, 1.2 mil. Okay, back again shortly. Okay, welcome back again. So that step 40 is completed. Uh, I've got this glued on. I've got that piece stuck in there. <laughs> And the vents, those two little vents, one on each side at the back there. Um, I've gone ahead in step 41 because there's only three pieces to put on for that step. And that's this bit. So this piece is going to sit up there. I've already test fitted it, so it goes in like that. And then we've got these pieces which sit underneath. Okay, so they go under the under there and just covers that just makes that curved area in there nice and they'll just sit in there okay again you can't go wrong they only go one way so that's that so i'll get on to that and um then we'll move on to step 42 which looks like a subsection that we need to put together to show you here there it is here 32, 33, which looks like it'll get put down over the page. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> Let me finish this bit off. Back in a sec. Okay, so that's glued on. The pieces underneath, tidied up under there. They're done. So now, going over to step 42, just looking at these, which are these, I wasn't paying much attention. These are actually six separate pieces to be put together and then they're numbered 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33 and when you go over the page you see that uh, they go down into here, into here on each side. So there's one, two and three. They're going in there. Okay, so uh, yeah, looks good. Now I'm not sure whether I'll need to paint the inside of those uh, the dark grey, I'll go further ahead and check. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, um, I'll get these pieces off the sprue and definitely make sure I don't get them mixed up because they all look very similar. So I'll label them and put, keep them all separate. All right, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, just so I'd show you here, this is... Uh, we're working on those pieces in step 42. We've done the first one. This is the one they label as S28. So what I've done is I've written on there S28. Um, that won't be seen. That'll be underneath. Because uh, as you'll see, I've just test fitted it here. Bring this across. So it's going to sit in there, which it does pretty much perfectly. Uh, yeah, good. Um, now, inside here, I noticed that there's a checker plate where one of the guns is going to sit, anti-aircraft guns. And uh, so what I'll do is, like the last, this should be done in the grey, like the other ones I've done on the deck in the previous videos. And I hand-painted them, and they come up beautifully. So I will do the same thing with this. So when this is all together except for the guns, because all the guns will be all done separately and then placed in. Um, when it's all painted, uh, undercoated, then I'll do it all in the IJN grey, and then I'll come along with a brush and I'll do the insides of these and any others that might need doing. Um, that's no problem at all. And then we'll 
we pop the uh, anti-aircraft guns inside there. All right, so yeah, so that's gone on well. Very important to keep them in order. That's why I've numbered them, because they have to go in their specific location. I mean, you could probably figure it out anyway, but it's just going to make it easier. <laughs> All right, I will keep going, and we'll come back when I have had the other six made up. And then in step 43, we'll actually, we actually put them all on. Yeah, probably a couple other bits. So I'll do that. All right. Once again, back shortly. Okay, we're back and uh, I've got all those on. They're all glued in place. Um, there was also a couple of vents that go down here. So those are on. So that's done. Um, the next step was in step 45, I think. Uh, actually, no, these need to be glued on. So I need to attach these onto there, which I think they're the wrong way around. <laughs> Just check. Yeah. Just see how that's going to go. No, I had it the right way. Yeah. that's it there we go one on that side one on the other so I'll um, I'll attach those and then um, after that's on step 44 then 45 is um, there's a couple of more platforms that go inside here somewhere uh, lots of guns on this so it's full of stuff like that uh, I'll get these side parts glued on. All right, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so those two sides are attached. It's starting to look quite bulky now. Um, they're still drying. I've only done it in the last 15 minutes or so. Um, I just use the Revell contact around it, and then after I'll go under there with some um, um, instant set cement glue and fix just to make sure. Now, that was step 44 done. Now we're going on step 45. We'll just move that aside. So bring that out. There we go. So step 45 is uh, adding more platforms. We've got these ones here, U2 and E49, which creates 34 and part 35, which I have just done. There they are there. And I've written underneath so they don't get mixed up. So they're done. And I've also got this one here, M25, that little box. Simple. Uh, there was also a porthole in there for each side, so I drilled them out to be filled later with uh, my uh, canopy clear glue. And then there was these pieces that go on either side of it. I've got them, and again, labelled on the inside where they won't be seen. That's part 36 and part 35, I think. Yeah. Uh, 36 and 37, I should say. They'll go on either side of that superstructure. And uh, so I'll have to glue that on. Now, while I was waiting for the glue to dry, uh, I went over to the next step, because these are not much in each step. They're quite simple, really. Step 46 is simply a bit of photo etch, nothing more. So I actually have them um, taken off the sprue, bent, there they are, and uh, ready to go on. So uh, that's that, and that'll be step 46. And racing ahead, <laughs> here we have this on step 47. I've just begun this, so there's our platform there, M18. M26, which will go up on top. And this and this I haven't even begun to do yet. But uh, we'll hold off on that. We'll come back to, the, to that. For the moment, I'll get all these parts put on. And, uh, and then we'll work on this because it does look like there's... Uh, yeah, there's quite a bit of work to be done on this. So that superstructure we can put away safely 
to the side. So don't think we need to be accessing that until this part is all complete. And as you can see, there's a lot to it. Look at that. <laughs> and at step 50, it gets placed uh, down onto our superstructure. Okay, so um, yeah, I'll come back when, um, let's see. Yeah, when all these parts are on, all right? Okay, back shortly in your time. Okay, so that's those platforms on, the railings on, that little box there is on top, and that should be it. And the um, boxes on the side went on wherever they went. And, uh, yeah, come up well. So this I can put aside now, put it somewhere safe, because we don't come back to that for a while until we start building up some of the superstructure that's going to sit on the front here. And that will be actually going, I guess, on there like that. But there's a lot to go on this, so we've got to start building that up. All right, so I'll put this away, get myself set up, and uh, we'll continue. Back in a sec. Okay, welcome back again. So we've got these parts all glued on together. Um, done. Worked on, got this part now, which needs some photo etch quite a bit actually, and really tiny. There's a little piece there, you probably just see it glinting. All right, a little bit of photo etch there. And we need to put um, seven of them all the way around here which is strange, I noticed, because this top piece that um, sits on here has all these little supports in there that are exactly as the ones that I need to put on here that are missing. Makes you wonder, well, why didn't they just put them on there when they moulded this piece, if they went to the trouble of doing it on that piece? Ah, anyway, so we've got to do it, which is tiny, as you can see. So again, the blue tech trick, Blue tack trick will come in handy for putting them in there, placing them in the wax pencil for moving them about, as I went through earlier. Um, there's also some really tiny pieces, two little ones that go above the little portholes, which I had to drill out as well. So they're to be done. Now, what I'm also going to do, I will just move this to here, is up in this corner here, I'm going to put the... Um, step of the instructions that we're up to. It's just going to make it a bit easier to follow along because if we have a look at, um, well, first let me put up step 47. So step 47, I'll put that up there. We'll see how this goes for to begin with. Um, actually, probably I don't want to cover my icky sticky um, label there. So we'll put it up in this corner. Okay, we'll put it up here. That's better. All right. Now, the reason is because, and I'll just move some stuff out of the way here, because we're going to be like working a lot of superstructure pieces. So there it is there that we're doing. Um, so there's all the photo etch going on. Over the page, there's more parts going on. More parts going on. Step 48 has quite a bit all there. 49, lots of pieces being built up until finally the piece gets lowered down onto the superstructure here. I just think it'd be easier for people to follow along if uh, you can see that up in the corner there. So let me know what you think, if you think that's a good idea. Um, and you can, you'll know exactly what, uh, what we're referring to. And it shouldn't take up too much screen space. We've got plenty of room. At the moment, the camera's actually zoomed in because these parts are so small. Um, but if I zoom the camera out, which I will do right now, let me just get into the settings here. And we'll put the camera back out. And you'll see that now yeah, there's plenty of space. All right, I'll keep it like that. All right, plenty of room. Okay, so uh, I'll continue on. Um, I'm going to take all these tiny pieces off the photo etch frets um, one at a time and then and put them on as I go because I don't want to lose these. And, uh, and then we'll come back and have a look. Now, what I will be doing um, is just sticking these, gluing these straight on with 
uh, the Icky Sticky CA glue because they're so small. I haven't yet, I didn't get a chance to go to the shops yesterday and buy syringes, which I want to try for applying exactly for this, for small amounts. Um, as you know, I do use my little wire piece here. Um, but that's a little bit, yeah, I just want to get try the syringe idea, particularly for applying the um, activator, because that's something really handy when you're using um, small parts like this. You want them to stick pretty much straight away. All right, so we'll come back when I'm done with this, and um, today I will whip out and have a look and see if I can buy these syringes. I'll be back shortly. Okay, we're back. I got the photo etch on, and my gosh, it's small. <laughs> I'll throw a few photos up in the corner here, and uh, you can just see how tiny this stuff is. Even on a 1200 scale ship, it's amazing. They've got some, some small parts. But there they are, they're all on, as you can see. Um, so with that, I'll add two more tips for photo etch application. Number one, make sure you've got a good set of these or something like it, because there's no way you could do that with just your normal eyesight, surely. Unless you're 18 years old or something, not 50 odd like me. <laughs> and the other tip is, don't drink coffee before you do this. You need a rock steady hand to be able to position those um, in there, which I've managed to do, particularly those really tiny little photo etch C56 pieces, the two of them above the portholes. But they're there, they're on, stuck down with uh, medium CA, applied with my little applicator tool and uh yeah done so now this gets attached to the top of here and um, that will be step 47 and then we can turn the page and uh see what next is in what's next in store for us which i'm pretty sure will be more photo etch okay i'll stick this on and be back in a second okay back again and working on uh, step 48 so uh, what you'll see here is what I've come, I found out a, a bit of a tip. When you get this part, you can put that together, no problem. Um, but then the instructions, as you can see there, it shows you that this goes up against here and there's these poles that go in. There's a hole in the top and bottom, but they're quite long. So, and there's also a bit of a gap under here. So what I did was I pushed this on without gluing it just to make sure it's going to be in the right position. Then I pushed this in, or actually I glued the top of these poles into the base here, and then I maneuvered it so that they went down into the holes in the bottom there, if you can see that, right? And then pushed it in and it sits and it would sit on there and it clips in pretty much tight. And then because where that gap was under here, you just press that down, maneuver it until you get it right where you want it. It's a strange way it actually connects on there. Uh, and then, and that's it. So right now, none of that's glued other than top of the posts there. So I'll just go along now with extra thin and, and just run it around there and make sure and glue it all in. But yeah, it's best if you... In the previous step, don't glue that on. Just sit it there because um, it's all such a nice tight fit that it, it'll stay there and then come in with this. If you glue that on first, you won't get those on. You won't get those underneath. Just remember that. And it shows you in the instructions. They sort of go on as together. Yeah. So now I'll move over to the next step, which looks like... Uh, yeah, definitely looks like more photo etch. Um, more of those little support braces that are going underneath and a bit of railing and so forth. All right. So, uh, yeah. Oh, I haven't glued this yet. I'll do that now and uh, we'll come back to the next part. Back in a sec. Okay, back again and uh, added the railing around there. You can see that. And uh, they end over here, 
little pieces there and then the stairs the ladders going up the side there um to bend them i just use this little bit of plastic it's actually one of the um micro brush applicators from Iggy sticky I just cut the end off i use that to roll it's quite simple just bends it up no problems at all also use the um activator uh, particularly for the ladders there just to make sure they stick straight away and um I put them in a bit of CA glue, just rock, like layered them in that, and then touched them on there, and done. So, so that bit's looking pretty good, and uh, I'll put that aside now because, as you see up in the instructions there, that we need to um, work on two, whatever those are, um, which are the similar to the things we've already put on the stern um, deck. So uh, I will find out what they are, or if someone in comments knows uh, what the name of those uh, those are. And uh, they got photo etch on there, plus parts Q8 and W6, W1. And when they go on, they will go here and on the other side here. Okay. All right, uh, we'll continue on. We'll be back in a sec. Hey, welcome back. So I thought I'd just show you the process of getting these bits of photo etched. So I put two on already. They're just dry fitted. They're not glued in place. I'm just making sure they're all correct. Uh, I've got another two pieces here that have come off. These are the G32s. Uh, so I just what I do is I just give them a, a little sand on the end. Just half a dozen wipes on either end just to get those little nubs off and make sure they're completely smooth so they're going to fit perfectly that's it and then using my little rolling pin pin on there i just push it down roll it like that and then we test fit bring it across drop it on that and in that case it was rolled perfectly we do the next one and again just where it was cut off sand that same with the other end and i'm just using a sanding stick here which is a uh, 320 coarseness drop it back on here roll it like this pretty much you know same pressure as the last one because it's going on exactly the same because we're going to make two of these drop it in place and there it is done so what i'll do now is now that i know they fit then one at a time what i'm going to do is i've got my watered down mig ammo glue which is this ultra glue okay and uh it's very watered down it's it's almost like look at that you know a bit thicker than what you'd put through your airbrush if it were paint All right and then i use my little brushes here little uh icky sticky ones that i showed you earlier there they are micro blush so what i would do is for example we'll do one here we'll take this first one back off like this now what i should be doing is using my wax wax pencil but that doesn't matter so it's going to sit there so i'll take my little big brush and simply swipe it down there like that and then we come back and drop our piece in like that done and i'll do that for the rest of them and they're done all right i'll get on to that and then we'll come back and uh, move on to uh putting them on putting them onto this and uh adding a couple more pieces all right we'll be back in a sec okay so that's done um i think i showed there they are all the bits on the side here those two poles i'm not sure what they are but they're on 
Uh, we've got a ladder on the back here. So that bit's complete. Well, there's more to go on it, but for the moment we can put that aside. I'll just pop up number um, 49 of the instructions up there. And as you can see, quite a lot of stuff to be done there. So this can uh, move somewhere safe. I'll go put it in a container somewhere. And uh, yeah, so as you can see, there's uh, a lot of stuff to be done there. So what I will do first is make sure that all those sprue parts that I need are actually clean, which I think most of them are. I've used these sprues before. And uh, it looks like ZH is an individual piece I need to go find out of the box. And um, I guess we'll start putting bits on that. All right. So again, I shall return. Okay, so this piece is finished now. Got all the plastic bits on, all the photo bits on. Bits on. There's a little uh, platform sticking out there. Uh, we've got the railing running all the way around the top, and a ladder on the side there. The railing is going to be very, very careful with it. Um, take it very carefully off the sprue. It's very thin. And then when you get it onto here, do what I normally do and just roll it until you get into it roughly into a circle it doesn't have to be perfect and then what you do is you literally go around and just glue in one post at a time or two so start here and just do the first two posts and then use some uh, accelerate activator to instant set it and then do the next put two and work your way all the way around and uh, it should line up quite well like that and you can just shape it with your tweezers at the top just to get that shape like it is there. So that come out quite good. All right. I heard me nervous for a second there, but it all once you thank God for the activator that instantly sets your CA glue. It makes it much easier. Okay, so as we can go up under the instructions there, we're moving on to piece G53 which is the third one across. Uh, I have that piece on here off the sprue. I will move that into a safe spot because we don't need that for a while while we're working on this. And it uh, looks like there's just a few plastic bits and a bit of trimming and tidying up off the sprue. And uh, I'll get on with that one. If I come across anything that's a bit tricky because there is photo etch going on this with uh, some, looks like a bit curved bends needed to be done. Uh, I'll let you know and we'll have a look. Okay, back shortly. Okay, welcome back. So a couple of hours have passed, although I did watch a Netflix movie in between. Um, but there we go. This part is all put together. Almost. We're almost there on 40, step 49. So I've got the gantry down there. It's like a walkway um, suspended below. We've got all the ladders the sides uh, some photo etch on there. there's nothing too difficult just as long as you've got your you know your instant activator um, it all goes on quite nicely all I have to do now is there's a three pieces of railing to make up around the top here <clears throat> you'll see that on the instructions there and then move down to placing on top of the piece we built earlier and then on top of all of that, there's a single piece of photo etch that goes all the way around on that again. I will do a test fit and see whether that photo etch should be easier to put on before I put the top on or after. We'll check that out. And then after that's done, it all goes down on top of the uh, main piece we've got, which then goes down into, well, we'll have a look when we get to step 50. Okay, so yeah, it's it's come along well, and uh, no, <coughs> excuse me, no major problems at the moment. Photo etch is going on well, all little positions. It's good how even the ladders um, have all positions marked on them, so you they go exactly where they go, and it's it's very it's quite simple. All right, um, yep, I will keep on going. I'll be back very soon. We'll have this piece done. 
Hey there, back again. And here we go. There it is. It's all put together. Um, how about I bring the camera down at a better angle so we can have a look at it. I mean, I can lift it up and show you, of course, but let's have a look from the side. All right, there we go. So it's all put together. Now, there was that railing I was talking about. If you look at the instructions there in the corner, the PEB29 railing, I think that's an error in the um, in the manual. The piece does exist. There is that piece to put on there. But where they're saying it goes is right where that railing is already in place on here. I just can't figure out where they where it fits. So I'm not putting it on because it, can't, it just doesn't go on. Because when you go ahead in the instructions and look at the piece in the next image being placed on top of here, the railing's not in the picture. That That's not there. And going further through the instructions to get different angle views of it on here, it, it's not there. So I don't know what the story is with that. If you're building this and you've come across that, What's the solution? Yeah, I mean, if it can go on somehow, uh, let me know in the comments because I can still fix that if I needed to. But uh, so, yeah, there it is. There's all our ladders are on, railings there. And that subsection is now in the next step, which will be step 50, which I'll now put that up in the top corner. There it is, is simply putting that down on the superstructure, which I will not be doing, okay, because uh, I'm going to paint this separately, okay, and uh, because it'll be easy to put on because there's these two connecting points here that really, that's all that needs to be glued. I don't have to really worry about um, gluing it onto a painted surface, so that'll go on quite a, quite simply. Um, and I've test fitted it and it's fine. So that will get stored away and get painted or maybe I'll at least get some um, Outlaw Paints uh, Undercoat Grey on there. Uh, black, all black, because we want to get some nice detail. We'll see how we go. So that will be step 50, which we won't cross as done, but we'll skip over to step 51. All right, so let me just go sort things out here and we'll be back in a sec. Okay, so the next step will be step 51. It looks like we're starting on the uh, the bridge assembly up on the superstructure. Uh, it's quite a lot of detail in that, although it starts off pretty easy and just gets a bit more difficult by looks at it as we go. And of course, we'll be dealing with a lot of photo etch from here on in. So I may be trying this camera angle a bit more often. Um, an update on the syringes. I went to go buy some syringes for um, helping me apply the um, activator just so I could, rather than using the brush, I could just use a syringe to place it in small spots when doing photo etch to instantly set that CA glue. So I got some, which are, well, they're syringes, but there's no needles. I tried half a dozen places out in the shopping centre, pharmacies, chemists, uh, wherever. You can't buy syringes with needles. Okay, so unless you're a diabetic and you have to use insulin and you want to pay $35 for a box of the things, um, yeah, they're not really what I want. Uh, but yeah, so... These are no good to me. I can't use these. Um, yeah, the only way I was told by the staff was to buy them online. I think it's a safety issue. I'm not sure. But yeah, you just can't buy the needles for them. <laughs> Which sort of makes these a bit pointless, doesn't it? Why you sell syringes if you can't put a needle in it? Anyway, um, so that idea is not going to happen. Uh, I'll continue what I've been doing and just uh, use the brush. Um, maybe I'll dedicate a finer paintbrush that I could dip in there and use it. But yeah, it just makes things neater. Um, even for glue application, 
Um, these are fine and they come with these tips and you can get micro ones which are smaller as well but even then with the medium CA glue that's okay because it's a fairly thick glue but the thin CA this one here um, this actually runs like water you've got to be very very careful you don't put too much when you're applying it which is why I use my homemade little applicators with the wire on them to touch in the glue and, and apply it using them and it works fine so yeah that's the update on the syringes uh probably not going to happen i'll see i have a quick look on ebay and that see if there's something there but otherwise i can do without all right um yeah so uh the bridge all right so i've got some parts to take off the sprue or well, some large uh subsection parts to get out of the box and a bit of photo etch so let's get started on this part okay back shortly okay we're back and uh got our pieces ready to go here uh also went ahead and took off this one which is actually in the next step because i just want to do a test fit there's quite a lot of photo etch needs to go around here so yeah we'll see how that is um I, talking about photo etch i was about to do the next step which was Put a piece of photo etch all the way around there but which i can do but then i also remembered and realized there's a lot of um, portholes in this tower piece here there's about a dozen of them actually maybe more so i need to drill so i'm going to drill them all out using the 1.2 mil drill that's what i've been that's been the standard for the portholes throughout the build but I'll do them as well. So I'll do them now actually, get them nice looking good, and then start on that photo etch, take some of that off and um, put that around. I was just trying to remember, I'm sure I saw somebody uh, who else is building this uh, Yamato comment saying they're a bit ahead of me, um, telling me that there was certain parts on this that are easy to put on before you put other parts that the instructions tell you and i had a look ahead and it seems okay we'll see how we go we may have to jump ahead and and uh and and get some bits done just to make things a bit easier later but anyway enough talk um, i'll drill these holes out and get the photo etch off and we'll come back when it's sitting on there because after that all we need to do is glue that piece in the top and start working on some little uh, binoculars that go around the top there okay i'll be back in a sec okay welcome back so let's have a look i've put the photo etch around that's stuck in there it's good i've glued this platform down in the top as it says to the next step is to put some photo etch all the way around the top of here but I found that that's where I'm going to have a problem and I think I was warned about this. So in there there's some little location points for those binoculars I was mentioning. Now they're not even going to get seen really. I mean let me show you. So this piece here will actually go on top just like that. Look how small that gap is to be able to see those binoculars in there. And not only that, but there's photo etch. There's like a little recess here along that edge there, and there's also along that edge there. And I'm thinking it would be easier to put the photo etch after this piece is put on top. I can just lay the photo etch in there because if I do it first, I'm, I'm, I can foresee problems getting this to sit properly and line up with the photo etch so that's what i'm going to do so i won't do the photo etch at the moment that goes around there i'll do that after this has been installed but i will move down and have a look at um, piece e43 which goes on the front here and it also has photo etch added to it as well and we'll just have a look at where that sits so i'll go get e43 i'll trim that up and um Probably just put that on and then uh, we'll have a look at the uh, next step with the photo etch as for those little binocular 
in the go in there. Um, there's actually 10 of them. I'll put them in anyway. Why not? You know, somebody might get a magnifying glass out and peer in there and say, where's all the binoculars? <laughs> so we'll do that too. All right, be back shortly. Okay, welcome back. So I've changed my mind about that top railing. I've decided to put it on um, because, <laughs> yeah, I, I just figured that it's going to be, it'll be okay. And what I've done is I'm using my um, MIG ammo photo etch glue and um, I've thinned it out. It's very, very thinned out. You can see it in there, right? And that's uh, with my little applicator. What I did was I just run the glue around and I've positioned it, bent it, and got it sitting there just absolutely perfectly. Now this glue is slow to dry, so it takes good up to an hour, I would say, before I would touch that. But in the meantime, I'll I'll start and do the rear piece. What I didn't notice in the instructions, as you can see, but the page was folded over and I didn't notice, is that there's two parts to this. I thought it was in one part and I had to bend it all the way around, but it's not so bad being in two sections. So I'll work on that other section now. Um, I also took off the piece that sits in the front here. I'm a little bit confused by it. There it is there. And it sits on there, and it sits flat on there, and it looks perfectly fine. Yet the instructions, as you can see on it, for photo etch A7, and it has a bend. But I don't know where to bend it. Doesn't really... The pictures don't show anything. It sort of looks like it's flat. Um, maybe it is slightly bent upwards. I'll test fit it again after I've after this is dried and, and see if there is any need to bend it. Yeah, a little bit confusing there. All right, I'm going to take off the photo etch off the other for the back end of that, and uh, I'll get that on. Okay, back to the set. All right, so there's the uh, rear section glued on, and what I did was I actually um, to position it. I just like. It's like tack welding it with some CA glue just in the three points just to keep it in an exact position and then I went along with like I did with the other one and used my little brush and my um, MIG ammo glue and just put a layer along the inside of that lower railing and uh, it's nice and flush in there it, it's perfect all right it's nice and straight so um, what I'm going to do now is I need to do a test fit of this because that was my concern that the top of this railing would line up with the imprint area around on there. So let's give this a shot. That looks good. That looks good. Perfect. That's going to sit on there absolutely perfectly. All right. So that's good. I'm relieved about that. Yeah, that's a good fit. All right. Now, as for this bit, still not too sure about that. I'm just still waiting for it all to dry a little bit more. And um, But in the meantime, I'll take off all those uh, binoculars that have got to go in there, as you see them all, the L30 and L31s, six and four of those. I'll get them all trimmed up off the sprue and let all that dry properly and then we'll come back. Okay, excellent. Back shortly. Hello, welcome back. So a bit of a different view. Um, I mentioned the um, prop shafts for the back of the Yamato were too long and I need to get them cut. Well, I managed to cut them myself using a Dremel. Um, they're the right length now, which is good. I just stuck a, a vise on the end of my cable, used my Dremel with a cutting disc and uh, yeah, came off no problem at all. So I'll um, go pop those in the back of the uh, Yamato and uh, it's all ready for propellers. And uh, that's all I had to take off was just about less than an inch, a centimetre and a half. And, uh, problem solved. Okay. All right, so we'll get back to what I'm up to now. 
in a sec. Okay, welcome back. And here we are with this completed for part uh, step 51. It's all done. You'll see I've got all the binoculars all sitting in the top there. I've got this piece of photo etch on the front, just glued it on actually. And uh, it sits there fine. I don't know why it has bend marks or says bend when there's really no reason to. Um, I've test fitted this that's going on top. I also took this piece and test fitted that's going on there. Nothing gets in the way. And if it was bent up anyway, it's only going to block the windows. So I'm happy with the way it is. So that lets us move on to step 52 now. Um, yeah, so let's do that. Let's get on to step 52. I'll put the instructions up in the top corner here. And uh, get myself sorted out. I think, uh, yeah, we'll get some pieces off the sprue. Because we've already got, obviously, the top platform that's going to go on. We've got that ready to go on the front. I'll get those two side pieces, E45 and E46. Um, I'll get them ready. And also back here, we got E18, which has a bit of photo etch on it. Uh, very tiny looking piece of photo etch by the looks of it. It's going to go on the front or rear down in here. All right, I'll get those bits off and we'll stick them on. We'll be back in a sec. Okay, welcome back again. So here we are with this to show you I've glued these side pieces on here this I haven't glued on yet I've got these pieces ready to go on here a bit of photo etch to go on that but um, if, before I glued that on I realized that even though in the front you're not going to be able to see through there um, when this is all painted I will be putting the glass effect in all the windows along there but it's going to be pretty dark I thought, but then around the back here, it's a bit more open. The window's a bit more open. So I've, I've decided I'm going to paint it inside. So what I'll do is I've just test fitted that. That fits perfectly. Take this back off. So what I'm going to do is just airbrush the top of this in here. So I'll just give it a quick primer coat and then I'll hit it with the um, IJN gray from Outlaw Paints. And, um, just so that inside's all painted up, doesn't matter where every paint gets anywhere else, it's all going to be painted anyway. So once that's on top, and then I do my painting, I know that it's going to be done on the inside because there's no way I'm going to get paint inside there and uh, looking any good. So I may even give the um, binoculars uh, a bit of a, a gunmetal black look just to give it an effect. Why not? <laughs> uh, which... Yeah, should not get affected when it gets painted over. Okay, so what we'll do is we won't go to the end of this step. We'll finish up the video here. Um, for those who were in this video, who in this video earlier, I mentioned the problem of, sorry, I mean, for those who watched my last video, I had the problems with those hose or cable reels for the ropes to go on. Um, this video is actually going to get uploaded because i'm going to finish it now on sunday which it is today and that video that you will have already seen goes out in another two days in tuesday so i haven't seen your comments yet uh, and suggestions for that yet okay but what i will do is in my community tab um i'll put up i'll put a few things in there and i'll mention the results and what i'm going to do um a couple of days after that video is up so it's all good but yeah i didn't have time to um get to that well i couldn't get to that because i finished it earlier i hope you understand what i'm trying to say <laughs> all right so this video will be actually released the following week okay and it's the next video after this number number this will be this is number part 11 part 12 is where hopefully we'll get those hose reels done Okay, and also on Friday next week, I'm expecting the Outlaw paints to come in with the white so I can uh, tone down the bow of the ship a little bit. We'll definitely be doing that in the next video. All right, but we did get the um, shafts done for the screws on the back of the ship, so that was good. And everything else. 
All right, so we'll finish this in the next video. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe. Please hit that like button and your comments are welcome below. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you're going on your model. Um, you can catch up with me on Facebook as well. The link's down there in the description to my Facebook. And I want to give a good, sh a big shout out to, to Plastic Model Mako over there in Japan. She gave me a bit of a shout out on her video uh, this week. Uh, thank you very much for that. And I'm returning the favor. I'll stick her little logo up there in the corner. And a link will be in the description. She's also building the Yamato. Um, going a little bit further than me too, with some bit of uh, extra photo etch happening there. Um, but uh, yeah, check out her video. It, it's it's really really quite a fun thing to watch, and she's yeah she she's going really well, really well. So we're we're, we're getting advice from each other and learning from each other. All right, thanks guys. Um, Thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and share the video out on any social media you might be with to get uh, anyone else who might be interested who's missing out. Okay, and I'll see you all next week in part 12 of our Yamato build. All right, thanks, guys. Bye for now.